In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are like a polished arrow in my quiver. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. We hear these powerful statements of affirmation from God spoken in the lips of the prophet Isaiah in the first reading for today. Throughout Holy Week, the first reading from the Hebrew Bible is often from the suffering servant psalms of Isaiah. These songs of a mysterious suffering servant who will suffer, but not, despite suffering will be God's chosen one to do God's work in the world. And we hear these songs over and over and kind of obviously pointing us to Christ. But the point being that, that this one God has chosen has gone through very difficult times, has suffered, has been not respected, not viewed well by those around him, but that God has chosen this person to do good things. You're like a polished arrow in my quiver. If you, I don't know what your particular hobby is, but you could probably think of it this way. For example, if you're uh, chosen hobby is actually hunting. You could think, I know back when I hunted before I had a four-year-old and a child and could actually get up and go and be away for hours on end and have my wife not be terrified about when I was coming back. Uh, you'd have my favorite arrows that I would like to use when I was hunting, my favorite instrument that I'm like, oh, I'm using this one today because I knew this one always flies true. I care about it. But it works for all kinds of hobbies. Bethany, of course, as many of you know, is a cook. And she's got her favorite knife, her favorite pan. And you can probably think of this in your own when you're going to cook something really good. And you know, I know exactly what I'm going to reach for. Or if you're a painter, or if you're a writer, or if you're an athlete, no matter what it is that your own hobby is, you probably have some kind of tool that's the one you like the best, the one you grab and go for when the time is right. God is saying to the suffering servant, you are that for me. And we tend to read the suffering servant songs, of course, as speaking of Christ, though they were written about Christ. They were written about the people of Israel, the leaders in that time of exile. And they apply to Christ because Christ is the fullest manifestation of the servant of God. But even beyond that, of course, they apply to you. And they apply to me. I know I felt this way, certainly, as I was approaching my ordination to the priest, but I felt that sense of calling way on my shoulders. I felt the joy in knowing all of the work and preparation had come to this moment of ordination. And I'd actually gotten for my ordination um, a ring uh, to remind myself of my vows that I used to wear on my right hand, a simple silver ring with a cross on it. Uh, I successfully lost it twice and also discovered that a big ring has a tendency to make my finger sore, so I don't wear it anymore. Uh, but it doesn't really affect the story negatively, I, um, I hope. Um, but the point being, when I got this ring, I asked uh, my bishop at the time, Bishop Wallace Ole, to bless the ring before the service. So I held the ring out, very proud of my ordination ring, and held it out to him. And he put his hand on it, and with his uh, aged thumb, he traced the cross on the ring, using the words from the collect of today, O oh God, who caused this shameful in instrument of death to be for us a way of salvation, grant us so to glory in the cross that we may suffer shame and humility. Not the most cheerful prayer for your ordination day, right? I was kind of like, oh my goodness, did you just come up with that? But of course, I was a new priest. I didn't know that he was, of course, reciting the colic for Tuesday and Holy Week. And of course, now, you know, over a decade since that, I get that prayer a little bit more about what it means at times to suffer, suffer shame and reproach, what it actually means to take on your cross. Because the odd thing about being the chosen instrument of God is that you don't always feel like that could be you because you think you're inadequate or you don't have it in you or because the challenge in front of you seems too great. But God reminds us through the cross, as we hear in the epistle reading for today, that God loves to take little things and use them for great goodness. And I wonder if you can see yourself that way this Holy Week. If you can know that when God calls you to take up your cross, God calls you to take up that which is in you to do good, that God sees you is that polished quiver 
that polished arrow in God's quiver, that there are moments that will arise in your life that you are the one that God wants to touch and say, now you speak to this person. Now you reach into the situation. Now you act in this way. Throughout your life, there are moments that you are the servant God has chosen. And it might feel hard. You might feel too, too, too small or too ashamed or too little. But that's not true. Because you always act when you act as God's servant with God's grace upholding you and sending you with the Spirit giving you words. So be that servant. Don't just follow Christ in his path to the cross during Holy Week, but see this as your own path to be the one God is calling, to be that instrument, that beloved tool, because your whole life God has been working on you. God has been preparing you. God has been teaching you strength and faith and love and mercy and kindness your whole life God has been working to make you that tool your time comes over and over again in your life have the courage to know when it's your time to stand up strong to feel the love of God at your back and to speak God's words of salvation to a hurting person or situation Amen <laughs>